In a recent video, I described this Q-meter, useful for testing inductors and their quality. It was a very popular video, and the project's very simple, but it wasn't self-contained. You had to use a multimeter set on volt setting to find the peak and then the 70% level to perform your measurements. That required extra calculations. I then foreshadowed an improvement involving connecting its own internal voltmeter. So then you didn't need the multimeter and using it would be made simpler. Today I'll describe a FET voltmeter that can be used not only in this application but many others. There's very few parts needed. The first thing I did was to have a look for circuits that others have made of simple FET voltmeters. Talking Electronics had an item that seemed promising in its handy data book one. I'll have the link to that in the video description. Talking Electronics is locally produced, not far from here in Melbourne, and I find that its circuits are often very reliable and tend to work first time. In this handy data book, number one, lots and lots and lots of circuits. There's an index. Anyway, we'll keep scrolling down. And then about the third the way down, here is a very promising circuit. It's very simple. Some FET voltmeters might be two transistors or so. But this one is about as easiest as you can get with just a single transistor here. As to how it works, it has a very high input impedance, which is really useful when you're trying to measure the voltage of low level RF signals. Of course, the voltmeter itself measures DC, but we've already looked after converting the RF to DC in the diode circuit in the Q-meter. So we don't need to worry about that. We just need to worry about measuring DC. Uh, you've got your FET, MPF102, doesn't have to be, but a similar type, and your voltage divider here. If you wanted to build this, you could vary the resistors from those shown if you want to have different uh, voltage ranges that you wish to measure. So it is very simple, very cheap, and in the old days they would have called this a vacuum tube voltmeter, as the early versions of this used a vacuum tube and not a FET. Here is the circuit which I've hand copied from the Talking Electronics design. Pretty much identical, except I think this version is a bit clearer. Going from left to right, we have the unknown voltage here. This is across about 11 mega ohm. There are various resistors here. I've got a 10K and a 100K in series because I didn't have a 110K resistor. Then you've got a 1 meg and then a 10 meg. And with this tap here, this is at 0.5 of a volt maximum but you can tap down if you want. You've got a five volt range and a 50 volt range. If you wanted to, you could vary the resistors um, and then you can get different ranges to this. I will use this control here to adjust the sensitivity. The Talking Electronics design had it as a trim pot where you basically just set it when you were calibrating it and forgetting about it. But I will have this as a potentiometer on the box so I can adjust it from outside and in this case when I'm sending a signal through measuring the Q of a coil on the peak I'll set it up so that it reads full scale and then you go up in frequency and down in frequency and when it gets to 70% of full scale then you stop that gives you your upper limit and your lower limit you take the difference and 
then you can work out the Q from that, noting the center frequency. This here is a trim pot where you just set it to zero. So once you've got power applied, set this to zero, then you apply voltage here, a known voltage, and then you use this one to calibrate it so that the meter needle is um, whatever your full scale is set to here. The Talking Electronics website mentions that you should use a regulated voltage uh, for best accuracy. So you could potentially use a full power supply with a voltage regulator. It suggests 12 volts, so you could use a 7812 or similar. In this case, I'm going to use a 9 volt battery, as this is less a measuring instrument than a relative indicator. I'm, I'm happy with this in the Q meter arrangement where I can get full scale and then I can do whatever I need to in adjusting the frequency to get it to 70%. So I'm not interested in something that's accurately reading in this application. It's a little bit hard to see some of the parts, but here I've mounted most of them on a piece of printed circuit board. I've used a hacksaw to make slots in them to separate them, so I've got a total of eight strips. I probably should have a bit more, as there are some resistors that are floating. This is the FET, the 2N... This is the FET. This is the active device, the 2N5458. Here is the potentiometer, 2.2K. That's used for the zero setting. You can see the meter movement there. And here is the sensitivity potentiometer in series with the meter. Here I'm adjusting the zero because if I go too far back then it goes backwards. Just testing a somewhat dead 9 volt battery. You can see the bottom 0 to 100 scale Let's assume it's 0 to 10 volts, so it's just under 8 volts. Of course we can vary it like this to adjust the sensitivity, which we need to do in this application. Here's the circuit of the whole thing. On the left, the Q meter, coupled to the voltmeter here. There's a voltage divider, 10 meg, 1 meg, so I think full scale deflection is around 5 volts. That gives you a little bit of leeway to adjust it so that it's a bit higher. With the FSD it's just a potentiometer in series with the meter. So the idea is you adjust it to 100%. You may need to adjust the power going in uh, as well. But with the FT817, you can do that with settings from 500 milliwatts up to 5 watts. Just something to be aware of, as it's very easy to get this wrong, is that the negative terminal on the battery and the earth connection here are not the same. Um, it's very easy to get confused but they are different connections. Now set up and ready to test. We've got the signal source, the FT817, and here's the coil under test. This is the highest Q coil that I measured before. Really important to keep it in the clear and especially away from metal objects. Look, this wire here is a little bit long, but anyway, it's the same length that I had when I was doing the previous measurement, so I'll leave it as is. You can see how narrow this is.
we'll just drop the sensitivity it's a little bit finicky here you can see the difference when I move my hand away I'll vary the frequency I might need to drop the sensitivity back a bit more 1896 1901 1907 so we're getting 11 kilohertz where we're at 70 percent of full scale enjoy these videos want to start in amateur radio well check out my books ham radio get started for usa readers and the australian ham radio handbook for those in australia for more information visit my website vk3ye.com or search their titles on amazon